World of Tanks and Warships is celebrating Christmas in a pretty violent way. Guild Wars 2 Living World is literally all or nothing. Warframe introduces a new wild frame who can dodge bullets, and Crossout finally launched its story-driven adventure mode. What's up guys, James Lawn here with a weekly recap for gaming news and announcements of the week of December 21st, 2018. And there's a decent amount of news again this week just before Christmas. So first up, War Thunder launched its 1.5 update, Supersonic Jets, this week. This update brings Italian ground forces, air-to-air -air guided missiles, and of course, Supersonic Jets to the game. The new ground force includes almost 30 new Italian vehicles for players to pilot, including the Breda 501 and the B-1 Centauro. New locations have also been added to War Thunder, including a new map set in Vietnam, which focuses on ground vehicles. Seems like a hefty little update. On a very similar note, World of Tanks Mercenaries also received a huge update this week, with the Holiday Events update now available to console players. From now until Christmas, players can participate in the Toy Tank mode, a cool little fan favorite holiday mode making its debut on consoles. Players can use toy tanks or toy artillery vehicles doing battle under a decorated Christmas tree complete with presents. The 12 Days of Tanksmas is set to begin today on the 21st, which will grant players plenty of gifts from silver to XP boosts and consumables. Players who participate in the 12 Days of Tanksmas and play at least one match, win or lose, will receive the limited edition premium tank Father Frost LTP, which is absolutely dripping with seasonal spirit and carnage, of course. Aside from all the holiday goodness, the 4.8 update to World of Tanks Mercenaries also saw the introduction of the Polish Tech Tree, which includes 10 new vehicles for players to work towards, including the 14 TP and the 40 TP Habicha, and the 60 TP Lavandowskiego. I think that's how you say it. Leave me alone, I have allergies. Also with Wargaming, patch 0.7.12 launched for the World of Warships this past week on PC, bringing new challenges, changes, and content to the game. The new in-game event has arrived called In the Name of His Highness, with the ultimate reward for the event being the new German Premium Tier 5 battleship, Prince Ethel Freibrich. Just for logging in and heading to the ports, players unlock two free Santa Claus containers. After that, these festive boxes are earned for completing missions. Santa Claus containers give you a chance to unlock rare premium ships, flags, ship camouflages, and more. This update also sees the arrival of the Bell Epoch collection. With this collection, developers are paying tribute to the historical period around the turn of the 20th century, a pre-Dreadnought era where lavishy decorated coal power ships sail the seven seas. The Mighty Prince campaign also allows players who have unlocked the Prince Ethel battleship to earn five researchable tier five ships with the permanent New Year's inspired camo patterns. Hatsuharu, Nuremberg, Icarus, Dallas, and Normandy. Completing the campaign earns players a permanent camouflage for their Prince Eitel Friedrich ship as well. As far as FPS games go, the PlayStation and Xbox One editions of Warface receive the Icebreaker update this week, which comes with new PvP maps as well as a new cooperative raid. The co-op map Icebreaker will take players to the heart of winter in this free update and further advances the overarching narrative towards its turning point. Other additions include new PvP maps like the Trailer Park map for Team Deathmatch, a destination map for Plant the Bomb, the Invasion map for Storm Mode, the Platform map for Blitz, and the Sub-Zero map for Domination. Seems like a decent size update. Next up, Warframe Fortuna received an update called the Profit Taker this week, which sees players doing battle with a massive spider. The update also features a new frame, Baruch, who can dodge all incoming projectiles when not attacking. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, but edges closer to his breaking point for each projectile dodged. Oddly enough, you can also lull enemies to sleep with a calming wave, causing enemies awoken by damage to be confused for a short time. That would be pretty confusing. His ultimate ability, Serene Storm, allows him to command the Desert Wind to deal powerful area of effect blows with his hands and feet. While commanding the Storm, his restraint meter is restored, bringing him back to the neutral state at its conclusion. Sort of a wild variety of skills with this one, if you ask me, but, you know, I'd always, I'm always up for new Warframes, so, uh, yeah, keep them coming. 
Also in the news, Hearthstone's Winter Veil vale event began this past week and is running until December 31st. Players can play 100 cards to complete the Happy Winter Veil vale quest and receive four Boomsday Project Booster Packs. There will also be uh, festive tavern brawls for players to hop into throughout the next two weeks. The Winter Veil vale Wonder Bundle is also available for purchase and includes six packs from the Journey to Ungoro, Knights of the Frozen Throne, Cobalts and Catacombs, The Witchwood, and the Boomsday Project for $19.99, which is a total of 30 booster packs. The first big tavern brawl is called Returns and Exchanges. It's kind of interesting. It has players build decks of 20 minions with 10 random class spells being chosen automatically once the match begins. At the start of each brawl, each player with, will mulligan for an opening hand and then gift the rest of their deck to their opponent. Each gift deck comes with a 5 mana gift receipt card and each hero only has 20 life. When the gift receipt is played, it refreshes your mana crystals and swaps the player's decks again and destroys the opponent's gift receipt. Kind of an interesting setup, but could be fun. On to some actual MMO news. ArenaNet announced this week that on January 8th, 2019, Season 4, Episode 5 of their Living World will launch, entitled All or Nothing. This will be free for all owners of the Path of Fire expansion for a short time and features several new additions to the game. Siren's Reef is the new fractal, where players work to break the island's curse while surrounded by an army of ghost pirates. Thunderhead Peaks is the brand new map for players to explore, which sees players return to the original Dwarven area from the first Guild Wars game. There are also upgradable Dragon's Blood weapons, as well as a new legendary longbow. Keep on the lookout for more information as it comes available on MMOHest.com. Next up, Black Desert Online releases The Archer's Awakening this past week. Upon reaching level 56, players can complete the Archer Ascension questline and unlock the true potential of the class. The Awakened Archer will gain access to powerful new skills, including Righteous Smite, which shoots a powerful light arrow that moves slowly but explodes on impact. Grandpa Crone is also coming to town for the holidays. He will soar through the sky in his flying sled, dropping gifts to players in Black Desert Online, regardless of how good they've been. Gifts include a Rudolph's headband, Santa's hat, Elon Tear, and Christmas trees for players to decorate their houses with. To further celebrate the holiday, you'll be able to participate in group snowman building to receive rewards like Grandpa Crone's gift, sharp black crystal shards, and hard black crystal shards. And on Christmas Day, the night vendor Patrigo will sell Crone boxes, which include enchanted accessories, gin magic crystals, and other valuables. Might not want to miss out on that if you're playing BDO. The upcoming pirate MMO Atlas from the studio related to, if not part of, Studio Wildcard, which is the creators of Ark Survival Evolved, recently announced a delay to their launch. So I've been a little out of the loop lately. This is a game that I was looking forward to when I first heard about it. Um, It was actually a so-called leaked trailer from Studio Wildcard, and many people thought it was an odd expansion or some sort of crazy mod for Ark. Either way, it looked awesome. Now come to find out it's a standalone title, which is launching soon, with a little bit of a delay. Now the full release was shifted to today, Friday the 21st, but with a delay announcement, Grapeshot Games, which is the studio I was referring to, released a new game trailer showing off the massive world of Atlas, and beginning today, the first live streams of Atlas will begin. Interested parties can follow their Twitter to see if the streams are going live. The new MMO designed by the creators of Ark Survival Evolved will host up to 40,000 players in a single world simultaneously. That's pretty cool. But it wouldn't be a studio wildcard or, you know, I guess a studio related to them without some sort of delay. Must run in the studio family, I guess. Should be worth the wait, though. Up next, Heavy Metal Machines announced this week that they plan to launch in China and hold three esports championships for North America, South America, and European servers in 2019. This will be Hoplon's first foray in the Eastern market, and they're hoping to broaden their appeal with some big esports events. Previously, Hoplon had a partnership with ESL Play to host championships in 2017 in South America and Europe with a prize pool of 10,000 euros. It's actually a pretty interesting looking title. Hopefully, it has enough following to take off with esports in an eastern market. On a slightly similar note, slightly, Crossout launched a story-driven adventure mode this past week. 
This new mode offers three types of tasks for players to complete, including Awakening, which is a multi-hour story campaign that unveils some of the darkest secrets of the Crossout world on a massive new map. Off-roads are side missions scattered across the adventure map, and joint missions are important events that allow every player in a given region to participate, sort of like the world bosses in Guild Wars 2. Completing these three types of content will grant players experience points and engraved shells, which are a rare resource used to craft exclusive weapons and decorative items. Even from the early days, I kind of felt that Crossout would do this, uh, at least go this route with its adventure mode. Too much lore to uh, leave it all out. Crossout is also playing host to a New Year's event from now until January 14th, where players can earn exclusive decorative items, character portraits, and vehicle stickers. This event also includes a Christmas heist PvE mode, where players fight against hordes of villain Gronch evil minions to protect the New Year's tree made out of destroyed Crossout vehicles. That sounds pretty fun, actually. Anyway, guys, that's about it for all the major news and announcements for this week. Have a wonderful Christmas from myself and the team over at MMWatch.com. For more information from the news topics, check the links in the description below. Feel free to discuss the news or even more news in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. But until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers. <laughs>